Just sit right back and you hear a tale, tale of a bunch of crooks that started from this prison place and based on comic books. There's the assassin, the crazy girl, the Australian, and the croc. Some flamey guy, and a lady with a sword, and even on Suicide Squad! It's lazy. Welcome to another review. Today we are reviewing the Suicide Squad movie. So, Suicide Squad movie starring Will Smith, Margot Robbie, Viola Davis, and Jared Leto, and a bunch of other cast members of the Suicide Squad. So for Suicide Squad, I was always aware of the comic books. I didn't start reading any of the comic books until recently, but it was always an interesting idea, and I was really excited to see this movie. This wasn't a very interesting movie for me. Well, let me quickly go over the basic story. We got all these different super criminals that uh, Viola Davis's Amanda Waller wants to put on a team in order to use them to get uh, to fight off extreme evils. We got Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Killer Croc, Captain Boomerang, Katana. Except Katana's not a super criminal, but we'll get into that later. Diablo and another guy who is um, uh, n not not long for this world. So basically, one of the members of the Suicide Squad gets off of her leash and awakens an evil, and she and her brother, this is the intent choice I'm talking about, uh, she and her brother start to destroy the city and are making a device that can destroy the world, which of course has to cause a bright light that shoots straight up in the air, because everything does. And so the Suicide Squad, led by Rick Flagg, is sent in to take them down. Now let me just go on to the characters one by one to say what I thought about them. Alright, so uh, Will Smith is dead shot. If you watch my predictions video, you will know that I said that he was Someone I was worried about. Not that I was worried about Will Smith acting badly or anything, except I've never seen him take on this type of a role where he was a straight up bad guy, or at the very least an anti hero. I mean, sure, there was Hancock, but I didn't really like Hancock, and of course, they made the a black superhero a bum. That wasn't really, you know, that wasn't great. But I'm happy to say that he killed it as Deadshot. You know, I don't know how much the the, the comics, or if any, that he saw of the character, but I think he really got the character. Whether or not he was just going off of the script, or if he actually did some comic book research, I don't know. But I think he got the character, you know? The type of character who, he he's a super villain, and he's always going to kind of look after himself, but he kind of has a little thing inside him that kind of makes him want to be a hero, but he just doesn't really listen to it a whole lot, but he also brought his own dramatic flair to the role. You know, he accepted that by him playing Deadshot, he was making Deadshot a black character. And so he says some things that, you know, that is something that... <laughs> Ah, I'm walking on thin ice right now. But, you know, he says some things that if Deadshot was a white guy, he wouldn't say. So I think that way he encompasses the tone of the character, but also makes it his own thing for the movies. I give a thumbs up all around to Will Smith's performance as Deadshot. I'm, I, he was funny, he was intense, and he actually could pull off the scenes where Deadshot had to be, you know, badass. So the next one I want to talk about is uh, Harley Quinn, of course, which is, you know, Margot Robbie, and we were, uh, this was the one we were looking forward to the most, really. For me, it was kind of tied with uh, Margot Robbie and Viola, uh, Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, but uh, you know what, this was, this was the one that everyone, because I remember, back in the day, I, this was after The Dark Knight came out. Chris, my brother Chris, who is a big fan of Harley Quinn. One of his favorites, if not his most favorite uh, comic book character. He said to me, after The Dark Knight came out, I was like, well, maybe the next one's going to be Harley Quinn. I said, Chris, it can't be. He's like, well, why can't it be? I'm like, Chris, Harley Quinn is not a villain that you can do in a Batman movie. For one thing, you need the Joker. Now that Heath Ledger died, there's no way they're going to do that. For another thing, you know, it's it's like... It's it's impossible because her story takes too long to develop, and she's not really a menacing villain on her own. Usually, you know, she needs the Joker to. She's a good assistant to the Joker, a good backup, but she's not really a good character of her own sort of thing. That's what I thought. Now, in my defense, this was when the Dark Knight came out. When I said that, superheroes were big, but they weren't as big as they are now. Okay. 
And at DC, we weren't doing the whole building a universe in our own continuity thing. That was not happening at DC. It was happening at Marvel, but it wasn't at DC at the time. So I figured there was no way ever we were going to see Harley Quinn on the big screen. And now that we have her, I say thumbs up all around for Margot Robbie as well. My only complaint that I can say is I think sometimes Margot Robbie's accent pops out. Because she's Australian, right? So I think her accent sometimes perks through with the character. Uh, it's not all the time, but you know, I, I can I can hear it. You know, I, it's like sometimes when she's trying to be a little bit like this, you know, trying to do the you know the innocent uh, Harley Quinn type voice. I can hear the Australianness in her voice, but it's not distracting. It's, I guess maybe a little distracting, but it's I still like her character. You know, she was a lot of fun. She had a lot of great lines. She was crazy. Honestly, besides that, no problems here with Harley Quinn. Uh, and I'm really glad to see her, you know, because Harley Quinn's one of my favorite villains, too, and I was really glad that she was able to finally come to the big screen, and to, because a lot of these are characters I did not think would ever be on the, you know, five years ago, if you told me that any of these characters would have made it to the big screen, I would have said probably not. Deadshot, he's a great character, but, you know, he's not really uh, a villain that could take on anyone in a meaningful way in a movie. Uh, Killer Croc, same thing. Uh, Harley Quinn is a sidekick to the Joker, and I don't think you would have enough time. Like, if you made a Batman Joker movie, you would want that to be the focus. And the rest of them, you barely even heard about. Like, I only know who El, El Diablo is recently because I... Well, unless it's the same El Diablo in the... In the in the Jonah Hex comics. But in any case, I only started reading a comic with him in it recently. Uh, the, sl the Slipknot guy. <laughs> I Everybody knew he was a dead man walking the moment they saw him. And I'm like, it's like, look, I know a lot about comics and I don't know who this guy is. And if I don't know who he is and you're on a movie called Suicide Squad, you're gonna die. I didn't know how fast they would kill him. That was pretty quick. But anyway, uh, we got also got Captain Boomerang, played by Jai Courtney. Uh, I thought it was good, actually. You know, a lot of us, me, uh, I, I think Jeremy Yonza said, we were like, if this guy can't pull off this role, can we please just get him out of the movies? And he, he pulled it off. I think he pulled it off. I don't like that they put, like, one, like, what is it, fake tooth or one thing right there? Whenever, the, the te whenever something happens to teeth, I'm always distracted by it. But I think that they had a lot of uh, a lot of great things with him. What's with the unicorn? That's what I want to know. Maybe he has the uh, same thing that Deadpool has. Anyway, um, then there was that, and I, I do think that he he kind of didn't have a whole lot to do. Like almost all the other characters had some moments for them. I, I didn't like he had a couple, but they weren't like big. And he, it's like he used his boomerangs more like as clubs rather than throwing them. I think they could have done some impressive stuff with the boomerangs. I want to talk about the big one, though. Uh, Jared Leto as the Joker. This is tricky, because there's certain things that I like and certain things that I don't like. For one thing, I don't like... This might sound trivial, but I don't like the way he dresses. For all of his incarnations, no matter what the difference... Joker has always been a snazzy dresser, you know? Suit, tie, maybe a hat of some kind. Here he's wearing like leather jackets and and weird stuff like that where he's just like, I don't know, I did not like that. Why would Joker wear that sort of thing? There's only one scene where he's dressing like in a way that I'm like, oh, that's how the Joker would dress. But, okay, that's that's a, that one's a nitpick, okay? I think the biggest problem, like, because when... when Jerry Leto wants to be menacing. It's good. It's it's good. It's he plays the joke. I still don't like the grills. I still don't like half the tattoos. But I think some of them work. Like the one where he has like a smile on his head. I think that works actually. That can add some tension to the scenes. My biggest problem is is okay. Two things. Number one. Joker seems way too concerned about Harley Quinn. Look, we've all, I, I've said this before, whenever you see these things, it was like, oh, I want a relationship like Joker and Harley. I say, no, no, you don't. That's like, it's a horrible, abusive relationship that nobody would ever want to be in. And here it kind of sounds like, no, it's an okay relationship. I mean, Joker in this movie goes out of his way to try to break Harley out and to get her free. He goes out of his way on multiple times to try to break her out of the Suicide Squad. Joker of the comics would not do that. He would not do anything to break Harley out, but if she broke out and joined his gang, he'd be like, oh, were you missing? I didn't even realize. 
He's not someone that's going to break a sweat if she's rotten away in Arkham Asylum. But if she breaks herself out, he'll use her because that's what he does to, with her. He uses her. In this case, he's like, no, I gotta get her out, I gotta get her out, I gotta get her out. You know, he's like sad and he's like angry and he wants to get her out of this. Like, It's like he has the same feelings for her that she has for him. They have a crazy love. Where in the comic books, Joker doesn't love her. He's just using her. Now, maybe they could d dive more into that in, like, the sequel if they do, like, if Harley's in, like, the next Batman movie. Uh, maybe they could d uh, dive into that and it was like, It wasn't that you were captured, it's that they were using my things! You know, that, that sort of thing. If they could dive into that. That's, like, the one thing that I was just like, Hmm... Would the Joker do that? Well, not the one thing, because there's another thing. If you took Joker out of this movie, very little would change. Like, at all. Like, look, I, I like the Joker just as much as anybody, but he plays a role in this movie that is really not necessary. I mean, there's only one scene that really happens where it's like, uh, he breaks Harley out for a sec, and then they crashes, and then you think he's dead, but you don't think he's dead, because, of course, he's not dead, because it's the flippin' Joker. And then Harley just walks back and joins the squad, and they're like, okay, whatever. So it's like, if you cut out all of the Joker scenes, and I hear there was more that they cut, but if you cut out all of them, then he would, it wouldn't really affect the movie a whole lot. I mean, okay, maybe, not all of them, okay, because the flashbacks to Harley's past, uh, you needed. You needed those. I love the way the movie starts, where it just shows how each and every one of them was caught. Deadshot gets caught by Batman, so does Harley. The <laughs> scene where he punches her underwater is hilarious. Um, Captain Boomerang tangles with the Flash. One of the characters in this movie, though, I think is uh, lacking a lot of development, is uh, Katana. Because I was interested in Katana being on this, because Katana is not a villain in comics. In fact, she's a hero. In fact, she was one of the members of one of my favorite teams for a while. Back in the day, I loved The Outsiders. The Outsiders were... I, I only owned a couple of issues, and then I, I started to tr wanted to find out more, because I, I love the idea of The Outsiders, which is a team of superheroes, but they're all being led by Batman. Batman's not having this, oh, we're a team, we're all equal BS anymore. He's like, no, I'm the boss, I have the most experience, you guys gotta do what I say. And they did, and it, that to me was really interesting for the Batman fan in me. But also, I, I like the characters, and Katana was one of them, and I, I really like her. She's a she's a character. She, she's a little bit more intense than other people because she has a sword that can suck other people's souls out. And she was also really good in the uh, Beware the Batman animated series. They brought her in. Uh, so Katana, it, it's kind of funny. Out of all the characters, Katana looks like her comic book counterpart the most. It's like, it's almost like it's just really good cosplay for her. Because, like, okay, Captain Boomerang, there's similarities. Harley Quinn, not really similarities to any of her past comics, but I think the comics are adding some of the similarities from the movies into her com costume now. Uh, I, I, I do like, one quick thing, I do like that they had a quick scene where she was dancing with the Joker in the original Harley Quinn comic uh, costume. Thumbs up for that, thank you. But... Uh, Katana's looks like exactly like the comic book, but she's lacking a lot of development, and what's the funny thing is, she's not actually a criminal. Like, they, they go over how all the criminals have bombs in their heads and whatnot, and then Katana just shows up, gets on the plane, and they're like, oh yeah, this is Katana, she has a sword that can steal your soul. And it's like, okay, that's a strange thing to do. Why? Now, don't get me wrong, she's pretty close to her comic book counterpart. She's more intense, she's quiet, she uh, gives a lot of glares, um, and she's you know uses her sword to uh, kill things. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying, like, there, there was a... I, I would have liked to have some more interactions intermingling with the squad. You know, we got a lot of Deadshot with Flag, a lot of, you know, uh, Harley with Deadshot... But nothing else with any of the other members. It would have liked it, like, in the animated movie, uh, The Assault on Arkham, it would have liked it if they had some of the background relationships unfold. Like, you know, how in that movie we had uh, Killer Frost and King Shark, you know, make, you know, like, uh, grow a friendship just between just them. Would have been nice to see something like, you know, maybe if uh, Katana and Killer Croc, you know... You know, they clicked or something. You know, something. So I'm just saying, it would have been nice for something. Overall, I think the, the movie, and the, probably the reason why a lot of critics are giving it a lot of crap, and the reason would be the, the, the plot is very straightforward. There's a, a MacGuffin thing that's going to destroy the world, and they have to get to it. 
But I think it's the characters themselves that bring a lot of life to this film, and a lot of creativity, and a lot of just good moments. And I, I haven't even talked about Amanda Waller yet. Ah, perfect casting! Did I not say it or what? Viola Davis, you are the woman. Thank you for bringing this character to life. There's a moment, I'm not going to give it away, where Viola Davis's Amanda Waller just does something like, DANG! Oh, crap! Yep, yep, Amanda Waller would do that in a heartbeat. No hesitation, none whatsoever. And yes, that is what Viola Davis plays Amanda Waller perfectly. Stone cold, idealistic, thinks that she's doing the right thing and is ready and willing and almost wants to take things to their highest extremes. Viola Davis' Amanda Waller is playing on thin ice. She's she's messing with fire, but that's where she wants to be, you know, in that in that sort of thing where it's like she's in the fire, but she's controlling the fire. She tells the fire where to go. So bravo for that, uh, Viola Davis. Love you. You're the you're the best. Uh, best casting for Amanda Waller that there could have been. Maybe this movie isn't for you. Maybe it's not. I think this movie is very fun. The plot is straightforward. Yes. Um, is it a little predictable? At times. Are the characters fun? Yes, they are. Do you want to see more of them? Yes, I do. Are they an accurate portrayal from what they are from the comic books? Absolutely. For me, I think Suicide Squad movie is a fun movie. I'm not going to say it's like one of the best comic book movies ever made, but I'm saying it's a fun movie. And so I'm giving Suicide Squad a... 7 out of 10. This is a good movie. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. There are some shortcomings, but in the end, they're really not that big of a deal to me. Like, sure, as I said, the Joker really didn't need to be in this movie, but as a comic book fan, I kind of want to see him in this movie. I like to see the characters, and so none of that stuff really bothers me. The stuff that are a little pointless don't bother me because of... Maybe it's because of the comic book fan in me. Maybe not. I don't know, but either way, I enjoyed myself. To give it a 7 out of 10, I think it's a good movie. I don't really have anything that I need to say for spoilers that I want to talk about. Uh, so, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm LazyD99. That's my review of Suicide Squad movie. Adios. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel. And wait for more coming soon.